Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out the DTF sublimation hack. I'm really excited to test this out today because I've been seeing it all over here and there and it's so mixed. Like I see some people that are swear by it and say it's wonderful, it's excellent, it works so great. And then I see some people that are like, eh, it's not worth the time, it's not worth my energy, um, stay away from it. So we're gonna be testing that out in today's video and seeing how well it does. So if you're lost, if you're like, what are you talking about? What DTF hack? Let's bring it back to the basics. So what is sublimation? Just in short, sublimation is where you take a special type of paper called sublimation paper, a special type of printer called a sublimation printer, or you can convert a printer. And how you do that is you get an eco tank, which is what I use, and you fill it with sublimation ink. And it will not work unless you have sublimation ink in it. So once it has that, you pick out your design online, usually a PNG file. It has a transparent background. You upload it to your software, and then you print that design out out on this special printer with that paper and with that special ink and then it makes a sublimation transfer. Once you have your transfer, you can then use heat to put it on so many different things. You can put it on t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, all kinds of things. It just needs a special type of coating. And I know I'm using the word special a lot, but it's true. It does need a lot of special different things. But once it has that type of coating, you can then put that design on all kinds of things. So the only downside to sublimation is, is it has to have either if it's a shirt, 100% polyester or at least a high level of polyester to be able to have vibrant results. You can sublimate on things, but it doesn't mean that it'll stay on there unless it has that poly coating just like all the other items as well. So what this hack basically is, is we're gonna be taking a different type of transfer film. So in sublimation, you use sublimation paper, but in this hack, you're gonna be using DTF transfer film, which is used by DTF machines normally that makes a different type of transfer that you can put on 100% cotton. But what some people have found is that you can actually use this film on your sublimation printer, print out your design, and use that powder that comes with the DTF powder put it on there and cure it, and then you can use it on 100% cotton. So that's what we're gonna be testing out today in this video, seeing if it works, if it doesn't work, and then we'll have a follow-up video after this on how many times we wash it and how does it hold up and all the things. You know, guys know I always come back with the results afterwards to see if things are really truly good because, you know, it might turn out great in this video and then it washes out. So that's something that we definitely need to test out to see if it really is, you know, 100% good. So that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. Let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so here is everything that y'all will need for today's project. We will need a t-shirt. I'm using 100% Gildan heavy cotton tee, um, but you can utilize any color or any fabric content that you would like. Now, just keep in mind that whatever transfer you pick for this or whatever design you pick for this, I should say, if it looks like it needs white, just pick a lighter color t-shirt so it won't look completely, you know, washed out. Next, she will need some transfer powder. I got all of this stuff on Amazon and I will link everything down below if you want the specific kind, but it's just regular DTF transfer powder. I got this bucket at the Dollar Tree for your powder so you can kind of shake it up around your transfer. And then you will need some DTF transfer film. This is the one that I got from Amazon as well. And then you'll need some masking tape. You will also need a heat press for this. And you also need a sublimation printer. I'm gonna be using my Epson 15,000. It is a converted sublimation printer. So I normally use Silhouette Studio, but it was acting up today. So if you're going to be sublimating, just remember to flip or mirror your design before you print it out. So the settings I use are nothing fancy, but I go to print, select my printer, portrait mode. I go to my paper tray. I select my paper type as premium presentation paper mat, put my photo size down to eight by 10, shrink to fit, and then I go to output as high quality. So here is the DTF transfer film that we will be using. Now it says print side is as you're taking it out of the pack. So it's hard to tell when you're looking at it, but if you look up closely to the film, the front is more matte. So that is the side that you wanna print on. The back is a little bit more glossy, so just don't print on that side. You will then take your transfer film and place it on top of a piece of copy paper. So the reason why is because our printers have a hard time kind of feeding this glossy paper through. So what we're doing is just putting it a little bit above the bottom of the copy paper and using our masking tape and taping it down so that way our printer feeds the paper easier and it's able to print on your transfer film. 
All right, so our paper is all loaded up into our printer and we are ready to print. Now, don't get frustrated if it doesn't feed through the first time. It might take some adjustment, but as long as it kind of feels that copy paper first, it will feed through. So our design is all printed out. Now it is wet, do not touch it. You're gonna wanna put it in something and pour on your powder. And what you're gonna do is literally just take this powder and shake it all through your wet ink and it will stick to all of your design. So when you hold this design up to the light, you're gonna be able to see all of that powder filled in to our wet ink on all of our design area. So the next thing that we need to do is go cure it on our heat press and I'll show you how. All right, so I have my transfer here, and as you see, this is the powdered side that we just did. We're gonna have that face up, and you're gonna wanna set it inside of your heat press. Do not close your heat press. Just kind of have it sitting in there, and what you're doing is you're curing it. Um, so we're gonna let that sit for probably like 30 seconds, and then check on it again, and you'll know when it's done by, the design's gonna look darker, and it's gonna kind of look like all that powder stuff kind of melted in, and I'll show you in just a second what it's supposed to look like. All right, so this is what it looks like when it is fully cured and ready to be pressed. So as you can see, the design just got darker and more vibrant. So now let's go ahead and pre-press our shirt. All right, so now we have our 100% cotton shirt. This is just 100% Gildan heavy cotton. So I'm gonna pre-press my shirt just to kind of get the moisture content out and then get it kind of centered in my press how I want it. And remember y'all, if you're using white, you want our lint roll your shirt. And just because it might have some kind of lint on it or something that might bake into the shirt. So I always lint roll all of my white materials. Okay, now we're gonna do our design. So all we need to do is put our design face down so that you're looking at your design the correct way, it's not mirrored anymore. And you're gonna put it on your shirt where you want it. I usually do about two to three finger lengths down and center it the best that I can. All right, and now I'm going to put this back on and we're gonna press it at 385 for about 35 seconds. Okay, this is the next part is you're gonna let it cool. So um, this design requires a cool peel. If you try and peel it now, it's probably going to uh, mess up really bad. So just let it cool and then we'll peel it. All right, y'all, so it's fully cooled off. So we're gonna go ahead and peel our paper off. Okay, y'all, so now we're gonna press it again for 10 more seconds. Um, and you would do this with a DTF transfer anyway, so we're kind of modeling that like it's a DTF transfer. So 10 more seconds at 385. Wow, I think it looks so good, you guys. Now, it's a, it's a distressed design, so it's supposed to be distressed slightly, but I think that for our first shirt, I think this turned out really good, and it's on 100% cotton, and it's super vibrant, so I think it looks awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and do one more shirt and just kind of see if there's some things we can tweak. I do know one thing I noticed was is that my design got a couple of like pizza wheel marks on it. So I had to, as you saw here, I had to cut around. Um, so it did get a little bit on the shirt, but it's not like terrible. So um, let's go ahead and on the next one, see if we can fix that and not have that happen on the next one. Okay, so this one's all cured and it didn't show the pizza wheels at all until I cured it. So I don't know if it's something with just DTF paper in general or if it's just the settings or what. So it's something we might have to play around with, but let's see how it looks after we press. So now that we've pressed it, honestly, I can't even see the pizza wheels at all. I think it looks really good. Maybe it's just something that's superficially on the paper that you just need to be mindful of with your settings and all of that good stuff. So that has been my experience with it. I think that the 
print or the press turned out really good. It's extremely vibrant. I mean, to be on 100% cotton, I think this looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and compare and put the two shirts together. All right, y'all, so here is our finished shirts. I think that they turned out super cute and very vibrant. And so I wanted to show you guys a comparison, you know, in person. So here is an just 100% polyester shirt sublimation transfer, regular sublimation t-shirt. And this is our, you know, DTF transfer that we made using our sublimation hack. And as you see, you know, it looks just as vibrant if not more vibrant than the sublimation print and that's pretty cool because this is an 100 percent cotton t-shirt so the real test will be when we wash it and you guys know that's what i usually do is i will have a follow-up video i will wash this multiple 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 times and then come back at you with um, those results whether it be on a short or a post or something so y'all stay tuned for that but yeah takeaways i would say you know when you do regular sublimation you're limited on colors and you know but it's nice because it's seamless into the fibers of the shirt it has no feel this has a little bit of a feel so that's not really a problem it almost feels like um, what a dtf transfer would feel like it has a little bit of a texture to it and um another takeaway i would say is just be careful of the pizza marks or the little bit of ink lines that came on these this one didn't show up after press but this one had a little bit of the black lines. so it's something that i guess you just need to be aware of and something maybe you can just play around with your settings and figure out otherwise but it gave us great results for being a hack you know this is awesome so we'll just have to see how it washes but yeah let me know what you guys think i think it looks great and i'm excited to see you know what we can do with this i'll definitely utilize it for personal projects i wouldn't say selling or anything like that yet um that i can recommend just because we have to you know do the wash test but yeah let me know what you guys think all right, y'all, so that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I definitely think that our shirts turned out super good and really vibrant, and I'm really anxious to see how they hold up in the wash. And I will not make you guys wait long. I will go ahead and start after it cures, or cures, after it sits and rests for at least 24 hours, I'm gonna wear it and I'm gonna start washing it. And I'm gonna do like a little follow-up for you guys so you can see how it holds up, because you guys know that the true test is after washing to see if it really really holds up but otherwise that was super fun and i'm really glad that i got to test it out i hope that you guys test it out as well and if you want to test everything out i'll link everything i used down in the description box if you want to try with the same things that i used so i hope that y'all enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see y'all in the next one bye